I hate gadgets. I hate tools that only do one thing, like chamfer planes. There's a million of these on the internet, and I think they're dumb. I even bought one, and I think it's dumb. These tools do cut a clean and even chamfer, but so does a hand plane. You can grab literally any bench plane, set it on the corner of a piece of wood, and after a few strokes, you've got a chamfer. And yes, it takes practice to learn this skill. It takes about 10 minutes of practice, and then you'll be able to do it for the rest of your life, and you'll never need a specialty tool. So when Jeff from Reed Planes told me he was coming out with a chamfer plane kit, I was, I guess, skeptical is the word? But Jeff is an amazing plane maker, and he really believes in the idea. So I went over to James Wright's website and ordered one. I mean, who knows? Here's the idea. The user supplies a plane and makes a pair of wooden skids. Jeff and James supply all the hardware to attach those skids to your plane. The attachment uses magnets and thumb screws, so you can pop it on and off really quick. Jeff recommends a block plane, and I'm kind of a tool collector, so I've got a couple of block planes. Oh, all right. Hold on. Honestly, that's not even all of them. I've got a box somewhere with like 10 more and I can't find it. How do you lose 10 block planes? I don't know. I guess that's why they call it having a problem. These little bronze connectors have to fit over the toe and heel of the plane, and there are lots of designs where this won't work. Luckily, the most common and affordable vintage block planes are perfect. This Craftsman plane is identical to a lot of old Stanleys. These go for a few dollars on the used market, and they work fine. For the wood parts, I'm going to use this nice scrap of white oak. It's quarter sawn, so it will be stable and easy to work with. Since I'm making tool parts, I need everything to be very square and precise. I need an exact thickness of 3 eighths of an inch and nicely jointed edges. After a bit of layout, I'm ready to mark my length, gauge my width, and rip down my two pieces. They came out just perfect. Except for being way too short. So I remade them out of this exotic wood. I think it's snake wood, but I really don't care. Now we need to plane the 45 degree chamfer angles onto the inside of these two pieces. I lay out the angles with my combination square, but these little pieces are difficult to hold in a standard vise. So instead, I grab each one in a hand screw and put that in the vise. The hand screw puts huge pressure on a tiny area, so I can hold this little piece very firmly, and it's also elevated, so I don't have to bend down. This is basically hands-free chamfering without a chamfer plane. It's not difficult, but you do need to watch your layout lines, especially on the ends, so everything stays parallel. And don't forget to double check when you're done. Those angles need to be correct. The front of the sled needs to slip over the front of your plane. Every plane is different, so you need a spacer that's as thick as your plane's toe. I've got some thin walnut, but it's too thin for my planing stop. A scrap of plywood fixes that problem, and I can plane that walnut no problem. If you don't have a planing stop yet, try the Compass Rose Ready Set planing stop. It's the most affordable steel planing stop on the market, and it works great. Making the spacer is delicate work, so I'm using my smallest tools, holding the work gently and going slowly. I actually got this piece right on the first try, which surprised even me. The bronze pieces fit, and now I just need to add those threaded inserts. And I didn't leave enough space at the end. That insert is never going to fit. So I remade the skids yet again for the second time today. I'm throwing out pieces that I messed up. So what's going on here? Why do I keep messing up? Well, this project looks simple, so I'm going a little too fast. Also, every block plane is different, so every chamfer sled is a custom build, and that's an opportunity to mess up too. Also, the instructions are very nice, and they're full color, which I appreciate, but they are a little bit short. I would have preferred longer, more step-by-step -step instructions, but still, 
This is mostly my fault. On my third and final try, I just left the pieces extra long by about three quarters of an inch. And that's what I suggest you do too. You can always trim them later. Now, my threaded insert fits and I can install those bronze pieces with the included screws. At this point, I'm totally positive I built everything correctly, but this thumb screw doesn't quite tighten down. No problem, I just went over to the bench grinder and took off a little bit of length and then cleaned up the end with a file. I had the same problem with the rear thumb screw, but it stuck out quite a bit more. My plane might have a thinner sole than most, so you won't necessarily have this problem. If you do, screws are easy to cut with a common hacksaw. Just like using the grinder, the end of the screw will be ragged, but you can just work that end with a file at an angle to give those threads a clean start. I promise, it's really easy. Now, those bronze pieces don't hold the plane down, they just hold it in place, back to front. Most of the hold comes from rare earth magnets. This kit includes nice big ones with lots of holding power, and you just put two of them in front of the blade and two of them behind. You can put these in with a regular Forstner bit. My bits are metric, but so are the magnets. So it all works out. The depth of these holes really matters, so drill the first one carefully, check it, and keep increasing the depth until the magnet sits just below the surface. Pull the magnet out, stick your drill bit back in there, and mark the sides with a sharpie. Now, drilling the other three holes will be easy, and there's no guesswork. Getting the magnets in was actually tougher than I expected. I'm using five minute epoxy, which has good hold, but it's also thick, and my holes are already a tight fit. Once I add a magnet, I instantly get an air seal, and the air trapped inside keeps shoving the magnet back up. So I pull the magnet out and quickly use a chisel to cut a little air channel in the side of each hole. That helps, but I still have to pound the magnet in with a mallet and a scrap of wood. After I get the first one in, the other three magnets disappear, and I start looking all around the bench. I'm not stupid, I know they're stuck to a piece of metal somewhere, but there are a lot of pieces of metal on my bench. Wait, do you see that? Because I don't. They're stuck to the underside of that chisel, but I don't turn it over. I'm using five minute epoxy, and it's been about four minutes, so I'm starting to panic. I'm double checking every single thing on the bench and even looking around the shop to see if they fell on the floor, and there they are, right between two chisels. That's what I love about woodworking. Every project is a new opportunity to feel stupid. I do get the magnets in just as the epoxy starts to set up, and then I use one of James's tricks by putting a piece of blue tape over the magnets and then putting the plane on top, the magnets will pull themselves to that perfect height and stay there until the adhesive hardens. It's the perfect technique for this situation. Once you finish your chamfer plane, you just have to learn how to use it, and that's not complicated. It has two adjustments you have to worry about. The first adjustment is depth, and just like normal, you wanna crank that down until you've got, in this case, I would say a medium heavy shaving. Chamfers don't usually tear out or split, and I kinda of set it so I can hog off material quickly and then just leave it at that setting. Now the one place you might get confused is you might cut a chamfer and then you want it to go a little bit deeper, so you increase that depth setting and nothing happens. And that's because the size and depth of your chamfer is determined by the distance between your two skids. So there are a couple of dark lines right here, they're cast into the bronze piece, and you copy them onto the wood when you build it, and those lines are repeated on the rear piece. You can line those up to make sure you have a consistent opening, and the instructions say to make that opening a tiny bit wider in the back, and I find that works out really well. I have my plane set for a you know, medium-sized chamfer. Not huge, but not tiny. And then actually doing the chamfer is really simple. You start at the back end, and you wanna take that top skid and kind of press down on it so you get a nice, positive connection with the wood, and then just push forward. And repeat. As you go, you can feel the second skid come into contact with the wood, and then it's really brainless. You just push the plane back and forth. Right at the end, something cool happens. 
take your last couple strokes and the shaving gets very light and then it stops. This plane is auto limiting. So when you finish your chamfer, it just stops cutting and then you're done. Have I been converted from my anti-gadget stance? Am I a chamfer plane man now? Well, honestly, I don't know. I like every tool when it's new. I mean, <laughs> don't we all like new toys? The question is, will I still like this and still be using it six months from now? And I don't know, so I'll come back and do an update at some point. What I can say about it is that I like the kit a lot. It has everything you need and nothing you don't, and all the components are good quality. It's a short project, not difficult to put together. I already made all the mistakes, so you don't have to worry you're gonna mess anything up. And then the chamfers this thing creates are extremely precise, repeatable, and even. They're perfect every single time. What I could really see doing with this is if one of my employees is in the shop helping me out, I could hand this to somebody with no woodworking experience and say, hey, break off the corners on those boards, and they'd be able to do it almost instantly. It's a super easy to use tool, and that's not easy, so good job, guys. Um, this kit is made by Jeff from Reed Plains, but it's sold through James over at Wood by Right. We'll put links to everything down in the description. James is my friend and one of my most valued colleagues, but we have no commercial affiliation. I paid full retail for this and I don't get anything when you buy one. Of course, making videos where you promote other people's products for no money is a great way to go bankrupt in the content game. It's not a good business strategy. And that's why I have patrons. My patrons provide the financial support to keep this channel independent so I don't have to take money to talk about products that I might not believe in. I believe in this one, but do, do I get sponsorship requests? Yeah, I get them every single day. I get multiple sponsorship inquiries in my email every day, and I don't even read them. I just delete them. I've deleted hundreds of them so far this year. Because if I start taking money to talk about stuff, that's gonna ruin everything good about this channel. If you'd like to help me stay independent, being a patron is $5 a month. You get free plans, you get access to an amazing forum with a warm and caring community. There's a ton of knowledge there. You get everything early. There's a lot of stuff for five bucks a month. Go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out the rewards we have for the people who make these videos possible and keep our content honest and unbiased. Thanks to them, and thanks to everybody who's watching. We really appreciate every single one of our viewers. We'll see you next week.